Hello, 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 this is Attorney Mike Revlin coming to you from Chicago, as usual, and the litigants, they're not behaving, as usual, they're not behaving, but today we get two of our favorites, Judge DeSanto, Judge Simpson in pain, the Judge DeSanto thing, that's Anita shot, and the Judge Simpson thing, well, that would be Natalie D's fault, let's do it, shall we? All right, we are on the record in the matter of the city of Wyandotte receiving probably 231388 and 231369 ABCDE. And counsel, your appearance, please. Good morning, Your Honor. My client's time to send to the matter being heard. Okay. All right, we've got Attorney Shumke, which is always good times. <laughs> but mostly the problem here is the guy, Center Square, Brownlee, the defendant, making kissy faces to uh, to the, uh, another defendant. Okay, thank you. And uh, Mr. Brownlee, your name, please. My name is David William Brownlee, Your Honor. All right, thank you. And today is the date scheduled for an arraignment. On two three one three six nine A B C and D, um, or maybe a pre trial it looks like, and then the two three one three eight eight is set for pre trial. Correct. Okay. And counsel, uh, which one do you handle? Which one would you like to handle first? Mr. Sunkey. Mr. Oh. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, I am able to review the matter. We were able to solidify a plea agreement on one case and then schedule uh, the arraignment to be, well, waive the arraignment, formal reading, stand mute, and then adjourn for discovery purposes. All right. So on the 2-3 matter, the one three six nine matter, the court will waive the formal reading. That's your plea of not guilty for purpose of the arraignment. <clears throat> and... Okay, I don't have you back on a Thursday until October 24th. I mean, a Tuesday. Which actually probably wouldn't be a bad thing since um, Mr. Sunke, you're, you're okay, you lost it now. Can you just have him jump in here um, in person, please? Because oh, now he's back in the breakout room. Okay. Well, this is just on the um, issue. I know we were going over dates. I'm ready to proceed, Judge. Okay. And um, so, Counsel, you, the last, next time you're here is until October 24th. Um, Judge, on the case I'm asking for a discovery, Judge, it's a uh, driving related case, and I'm not seeking body cam. So, I at least nobody married a stripper here, John. <laughs> No strippers got married in the making of this video. I didn't ask that it be moved to the 28th. I believe that's ample time for me to get all the proper discovery. It's come very quick uh, lately. Okay, well, so, okay. I, I can either do this for, Well, the next time you hear on a Tuesday is it's October 24th. Judge, it's uh, a date, if you'd like, if there's a day that Mr. Westmoreland's there, I can coordinate with him. Uh, this is not an overly complicated case. Okay. So, we could do that on the 7th, the 10th. 
the 17. Either October, well, either one of those days we have a jury trial scheduled. So we can do October 3rd or October 17th. Would you like October 3rd? Not the third judge. I unfortunately have a bench trial in person in Waterford, but uh, 17th would work. Okay. Yeah, at what time works for you, counsel? Uh, Nine a.m. Uh, the first uh, earliest day uh, time is always preferable, Judge. Okay, so we can get eight thirty a.m. that day. Okay, and um, uh, yes. as to I'll just uh, find on this matter in just a moment. Um, as to the two three one three eight eight counsel. Your Honor, my client to be tendering a plea to count one with the understanding count two and three would be dismissed. Mr. Brown, please raise your right hand. I'm Ms. Murray from the Tuscan Trust. This man be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. All right, thank you. Yeah, you heard the plea that your attorney placed on the record, correct? He's got a really strange affect. I, I don't know what it is, but it's just strange. I have. And uh, as to count one, resisting, assaulting, obstructing an officer, how do you plead? Guilty. You got over your advice of rights with your attorney, correct? I have. And you understand all of those rights? I do. And you understand that by entering into a plea, you will be waiving some of those rights, specifically your trial and appellate rights. I do. And you also understand the possible penalty as a result of your plea, whether in this court, any other court or administrative agency, correct? Unequivocally. And knowing all that, you still want to continue with your plea? Correct. And has anybody promised you anything, threatened you, or coerced you in any way for you to enter into a plea? Negative. And counsel, if you can please pardon your, your client, please. First, prior to um, being the plea, Mr. Brownlee, you understand that I am representing the co defendants in this matter, uh, Lynn Bobgarden and Hillary Turner. Do you have any problem with me representing uh, you as well? No, sir. All right, directing your attention back to September 6, 2023, were you in the city of Wyandotte? I was. All right, and at some point you came in contact with a police officer, correct? I did. And a police officer gave you a verbal command and you did not immediately comply with his order. Is that accurate? Yes, sir. Satisfied, Your Honor. All right, the court is also satisfied the plea is knowing, voluntary, and factually accurate. And the court will accept your plea. I think that's the basic problem here. You count one, dismiss count two and three for the plea agreement. We're going to schedule this matter for sentencing on October 17th at 8.30 a.m. Mr. Brownlee, I already told you to stop making uh, faces or signals to Ms. Baumgarten. It also applies true to Ms. Turner. I'm not, Your Honor. I'm watching your body language, sir. That would suggest otherwise. I'm simply, I'm simply looking at the mirror myself. All right, counsel, um, the bonding conditions are going to continue on 231388 and ask to bond on the other matter. Your Honor, my client does indicate that he does have lodging for himself as well as uh, his two co 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 defendants. Uh, he can reside with his parents. My understanding he has a strong family support system. So we're respectively requesting any leniency when determining an appropriate bond. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Well, the court will note that Mr. Brownlee's bond on the 231388 matter, $10,000, 10% bond. GPS tether not to possess or consume alcohol or drugs unless prescribed. Sir, please refresh my recollection. Do you work? 
I'm sorry. Do you work? Yes, I do. And where's that? I own my own business. What type of business, sir? It's a, a paint a paint repair company, Road Runner Mobile Auto Paint Repair. All right. The court is going to indicate in this matter, based on the charges, the fact that there's a pending case as well. This offense is alleged to have occurred about four days before the offense that Mr. Bradley just pled guilty to. And um, the court's going to indicate a $10,000, 10% bond. They got you released, sir. You're not to possess too many alcohol or drugs. And in the event you release GPS tether to the Wayne County Jail. And what the court is going to do, sir, as well, is I'm going to find out when we have to set this for a PSI. It'll probably be a phone in. All right, so let's go off the record in this matter. Um, is there a deputy right near you, sir? No. All right, can you um, can you go to the the door area or the window there to see if the deputy can um, can step on the screen, please? Oh, yeah, the judge is like, can you just leave? You're creeping me out. <laughs> that, that, that's 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 the real translation here. It doesn't appear that there is one here. Hold on. Hold on. I, I hate to say it, but the, the other defendant, she was eating it up, too. I mean, it, whatever he was doing was working. I don't have it. Excuse me, officer. <laughs> Good morning, Your Honor. Christopher Shemke appearing on behalf of my client. As the arraignment, we wait for more reading. My client says this. Oh, watch out. The, the, this is a, this is a different part of the call. I'm not sure, but I, I think it might be invo involving the same incident. I don't know. You, you guys can tell me in the chat. Manner being heard via Zoom. All right, Mr. Purcell. Good morning. We ended good our morning, meeting yesterday, and now we're not quite starting it with you, but you're back pretty early on this morning. Your name for the record, please. Spencer Purcell. <laughs> All right, thank you. Wayne County Deputy, uh, I have missed um, Turner for 915 BLA mine. Is that good? Yes, ma'am. We'll see you in the morning. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. All right, and so. Um, all right. I don't know what their co defendants, I, I don't know what the caper is, but. <laughs> But it's it's an odd it's an odd collection. So counsel, I'm sorry, as to the arraignment. It's the arraignment, we waive formal reading. My client stands me up. All right, the court waived the formal reading, enter plea of not guilty for purposes of the arraignment, and we will schedule this matter for pre-trial on when do we start the other one? I think next week, the 26th. That's correct, Your Honor. All right, so this is matter for pre-trial, September 26th. Maybe, I think maybe I did it for 9.30. We'll set this for 9.30 a.m. Okay, and counsel as to bond. Your Honor, as to bond, my client indicates he has a strong family support system. He lives with his uncle. He is gainfully employed. 
He also mentioned that he doesn't have any other cases or con, uh, pending issues. We would be respectfully requesting consideration for a personal bond and leniency in this matter. Uh, furthermore, he does indicate that uh, he is experiencing some chest pains. Thank you, Judge. Okay, so Mr. Crusoe, you were just arraigned in this court yesterday afternoon for a number of charges, correct? Correct. And you're still here because you then picked up two other charges after this court issued a bond, correct? Correct. Okay. Oh, man, I got to get together. Opportunity to have EMS come and check out your... Um, they, they would not take me to the hospital. They would not take me to the hospital. Stop. 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 You had an opportunity for EMS to come check you out regarding your claim of chest pains. Is that correct? No, they would not take me to the hospital. You got to watch the judge's, judge's expression as this thing unfolds. She just, she starts to just lose her mind. The police. <laughs> Sir, please listen to my question. My question was not, did they transport you to the hospital? My question was, you had the opportunity to have EMS come to the jail and check you out after you made your claim of chest pains. Is that correct? That's correct, but they, they did okay. not. Hold on. Hold on. When EMS came and checked you out, right, did they hook you up for an EKG? Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, okay. And was there anything abnormal? This is good. On your EKG? Yeah. <laughs> there was? Yes, there definitely was. <laughs> Okay. And I like to so, like, I, I like to request the body cam footage from all of this, the police encounter and everything. I did nothing illegal. I didn't do anything wrong. Sir. But the allegation is is that you refused to cooperate and return to your cell as you're being transported back to your cell. You had to be cover sprayed because you were refusing to go into your cell and you were resisting. And further, it appears as though there was a brand new blanket that was torn into four pieces in the middle of the cell. So that is what um, at, the time, I was telling them, at the time I was telling them I was trying to kill myself. So I was actually trying to kill myself. That's why I want the body cam footage. I want the footage from the cell because I was trying to hang myself. That's all on video. That's all on video. Okay. In the initial arrest, I want the body cam footage because I got pepper sprayed five times for no reason. Okay. So, sir, um, it appears as though for the plea agreement or for the police report um, that you allege mouth cancer, chest pains, consuming two yep. grams of meth, your appendix burst, and then you were having withdrawals. Yeah, right. that's true. I have mouth cancer, yes. Okay. And so EMS came over to the jail and they checked you out and there was a determination that you did not need further medical assistance at the hospital. That's because of the police. <laughs> Sir, EMS is not going to jeopardize what they need to do because of the police. Okay? So, there is not a medical need for you to go to the hospital. I need rehab. <laughs> Sir, I indicated that you could certainly go to rehab through the Wayne County Jail on your bond yesterday. You apparently didn't like that based upon whatever actions have been alleged since your arraignment last, well, late yesterday. 
It's not that. It's that I wanted to go to Wayne County. I wanted to go to Wayne County, and the cops here are being so mean to me. I wanted to kill myself, so I ripped up the blanket and I tried to hang myself. I didn't destroy the property to destroy it. I used it to hang around my neck. Okay. So then, sir, I'm going to indicate the following. I'm going to indicate a $7,500 10% bond. I'm going to mark your file medical. I'm going to indicate that you need to receive a psychiatric evaluation when you get down to the Wayne County Jail. The wheels of justice are going to roll you right into the Wayne County Jail. Anything else? No, I would like to request all the body cam from the, day, from the initial arrest. Okay, and so um, Mr. Sankey will um, likely request or indicate that you would like to have that discovery um, so that can get moving forward. All right, sir? Okay, because this whole arrest was illegal. I know my rights. <laughs> Wait, so this guy teamed up with Kissy Face Guy? I, I can't imagine how they how their uh, caper failed. Okay. Okay. So we will see you back on Tuesday. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Have a great day. Probably too late, but okay, I'll do what I can. <laughs> All right. Running out of people. Okay. I've got. So this is Jackson versus Beal, because of oh, okay. the oh, okay. left, oh. other than. Um, Jackson versus Beal. Yeah, Jackson versus. Miss Jackson was present on Zoom. Okay, and that's the one that we were doing. I guess. <laughs> Where's my original? Oh, there it is. That's it. Well. Court does call the case uh, Jackson versus Beal Properties. We just have to always remember plaintiff goes closer to the jury box, but that's okay. <laughs> Council, state your appearances, please. Hello again, Your Honor. Brent Anger on behalf of Plaintiff or Defendant, rather. Good morning, Your Honor. My name is Nicole Sunderland. I'm appearing on Plaintiff Tia Jackson, requesting permission to practice under Michigan Court Rule 8.120 under the supervision of your admins. Permission to practice is granted. Good morning. All right, folks, where are we on this case? What do we have today? Uh, we're here today for a show cause hearing for the appearance of Stuart Beal. Uh, we don't believe he's here today. Oh, uh, that's correct, Your Honor. Mr. Beal informed me last night that due to illness, he wouldn't be able to make it today. However, uh, Mr. Kennedy is here, and I believe that he can address any ambiguities that Mr. Beal wants to address in terms of discovery. Uh, this is the second time, Your Honor, on contempt of this court that Mr. Beal has failed to appear. And we believe that there are there's information that he would be able to answer that Mr. Kennedy cannot answer. And I would counter that we believe Mr. Kennedy can answer any questions that he is actually more than likely the best person, Your Honor, since he's intimately involved in this case. He prepared the amended discovery. 
Jen, if I could just jump in because I've been with this case a little bit longer than Ms. Sunderland. Um, uh, during Jess couldn't let her do it on. I, no, I, go I, ahead. Fine. I was gonna let her she do was it no, her. she was doing just fine, but go <laughs> She's ahead. Been great, but we're gonna I get the history that she. Uh, oh, okay, all right. So um, during the deposition of Mr. Kennedy, there were quite a few questions that he explicitly said that he did not know the answer to. Mr. Beal would know the answer to. Um, and Ms. Sunderland can get into the more recent exchanges we had over discovery, which further point to the importance of Mr. Beal's presence here on the second date that the court ordered his presence um, and that he has failed to appear. I'll let Ms. Sunderland get more into the specifics about the discovery. Um, well, yeah, I, my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, as, as I recall, there was a deposition. There were questions that were not answered and could not be answered by this. I believe that. And that's why I ordered Mr. Beal to be here to answer those questions. We've been through this. And so if under oath, this individual can't answer questions, I order the person that I thought we all agreed would be able to answer the questions and you bring me the person that couldn't answer the questions. In what world does that make any sense? Now, if anybody thinks this is okay, I am in the wrong world. I don't disagree with uh, your honest assessment. All I can say is that Mr. Field was unable to today. I have brought Mr. Kennedy in the hopes of facilitating something if there are any questions that remain. Uh, he said under oath that he can't answer that. I'm not sure. So how's he going to facilitate anything? I believe that the majority of those questions should have been cleared up by the two supplemental discovery answers that well, most recently, Your Honor. And at this point, I don't know what their questions are that they still have before they depose them. Okay, we're going to run into a problem. Well, Mr. Beal's going to run into a problem. And it's going to be a big one, and it's me. I ordered him here. You're telling me he's ill. Where is he? Sorry, John. Where is he? Right now, I do not know, Your Honor. I only spoke to him yesterday. Okay. This is a show cause. So I'm going to suggest that you go out and you try to reach your client and let him know that I'm contemplating issuing a bench warrant. And then once it's entered, I'll let my friend here contact the sheriff's department. We'll go get it. I don't understand why you do that, Your Honor, though. No, because you. he has not appeared. You can tell me it's an illness. You don't know where he is. He's supposed to be before the court. So somebody's going to answer for that today. I could just do it. I'm giving you the opportunity to contact your client, maybe talk some sense into him that he should be here. So I'll adjourn this, I mean, I'll stand in recess on this one until you can give me an answer. Understood. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Again, <laughs> we're back in session. Uh, all right, court does recall the case of Jackson versus Beal. All right, counsel, state your appearances again, please. Hello, Your Honor, Nicole Sunderland, appearing on behalf of Plaintiff Tia Jackson. All right, this is a hearing set up to show cause hearing regarding discovery responses. 
No, correct. Have, have the parties been able to try to work out some of the discovery or not? Now that Mr. Beal is present. Hick, it's a double rainbow. Hey, Cal, look at that. It's a double rainbow. Okay, Milagro. Soccer Blue, he made it. He made it. What do you know? What do you know? The attorney managed to get his client down there after uh, after Judge Simpson implied he might end up in the clink. <laughs> it's a miracle. It's a miracle. Then they went on. I, ma- I had to make an executive decision. I'd like to go to the end of hearings, but they went on for 17 and a half hours. They're probably still going, saying, I sent you this email. No, you didn't. It was it was awful, and I've lived it four thousand six hundred and thirty two times in real life, and and I'm I'm not doing it. I'm not streaming it. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I don't know if they got the discovery or not. I don't care. I just thought it was I just thought it was fun that uh, this, this attorney is going to show up. I mean, his client he, he can't control, uh, and he shows up. You know, judge is like, where's your client? Well, you know, I, th- I think that our previous filing could answer all these questions. Uh, no, no, it couldn't. Or we wouldn't be having a show cause hearing right now. We're in. I ordered that your client be here. There is no answer to it. <laughs> there is no answer. Oh, yes. Yes. There, there is no. There's no getting around that that he needs to be there. And and it was fun because. Judge, I mean, he wasn't that emotional about it, but he he was just trying to downregulate. I could watch, I could see the gears in his brain turning. He's like, deep breaths. I I'm I I'm going to express myself without looking crazy. <laughs> Cause what I want to do is ring some necks right now. And he 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 did a nice job. I thought that was kind of fun. But that 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 was fun. <laughs> I mean, they get it every day, but but uh, both both Judge DeSanto and Judge Simpson <laughs> just trying to compose themselves through complete and utter nonsense. It's fun. Thank you all for coming out. I appreciate it. I'll see you all soon.